afternoon, this is Natalia Bermejo, Product and Content Specialist in Sensofar. And today I want to bring here Sensofar 7.5.3, okay, which is filled with new capabilities. So to do so, I'm going to use a dental implant, that is a type of sample that is going to benefit a lot from these new capabilities. So let's dive in into these new capabilities. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so here you can see the dental implant. Okay, I'm using a 5x and what you're seeing is some damage that this dental implant has. And in this specific case, our customer uh, performed some um, laser texturing in the dental implant and they wanted to know how much the surface finish was changing when using a laser. Okay, so in order to actually characterize this, what we're going to do is actually to measure to the in the areas that we have some some laser damage and also we're going to measure in some areas that are undamaged so we can actually compare how the surface finish is going to change okay so in order to understand a little bit the sample we're going to do an overview okay this is this is how it looks like all right and now for measuring the surface finish we're going to change to a 50 extra long working distance and we're going to find the focus let's actually use this this is going to help us a little bit to understand where we are okay and in the middle of these two markings we're going to measure and to do so i loaded a recipe okay what is going to do is first of all an autofocus then an auto light and finally, it's going to perform the measure. So if we have a look at the image, this looks pretty good, okay? So we can save our recipe, and then we can go to the part of the five axis and create a 5MR, which is manual and multiple. And in here, one thing that we need to do is actually open the settings and we need to change how the movement is going to be. In this specific case, we're going to use references and to do so, we need to actually use relative movement. Also, we're going to check the option of references, okay? And the references need to be established before we, we set the other positions because the other positions are going to be relative to those references, okay? So um, I'm going to save this position, okay? And now I'm going to establish the references. And to do so, I'm going to open this and I can select how many references I want, one, two, or three. Normally it's better to use as many as possible because you're going to fix more degrees of freedom, okay? In this case, I'm going to use one because I just want to demonstrate it. And I'm going to use a 10x, okay? So I'm going to tell it to the software. And what I'm going to use for referencing is a chamfer, is some features on the chamfer. So let's go. And these features here, these circles, actually are found in several places of the chamfer. So actually I marked some. So let's go and find them. Okay, this is the one. And you see that this has some, um, some shadowing here. So we're going to use the first one, okay? So we click here. And now we have our reference, all right? And now we can go and add the position. Okay, so let's actually go to the tab of positions. Let's move again to rotation zero. And let's change our objective to the 50 and go to the reference position that we saved, okay? And this is going, going to be one of the positions that we're going to measure, so we add it. Then we can go, for example, to this area here. 
looks interesting. Let's measure in between. Okay. And now let's go and find some areas that are not damaged. So if we did rotate a little bit, we can find this area on the belly that is not damaged. Okay. Okay. So we add it. Okay. And something new about this new version of Sense 5 is that we are able to modify better these locations. So we actually have more options. First of all, we have the possibility of inserting a new position. So if I want to insert a position between two and three, I don't know, I want to insert maybe this position. I just click here and it's going to be inserted between one and three, okay? Then we have the possibility of the selected position. It can be replaced by the, by the current position, okay? And finally, if I want to check one position, the one that it's selected, I can click here and it's going to move to the selected position. So I can make sure that the position that I have there is going to be the one that I want to actually measure. So now the way to proceed is to go to find references and after that we click to add position. So in this case, we could go straight forward to that position because we know that the system is going to go to the positions that we established. But this referencing is actually really useful when it comes to unloading the sample and then loading it again. Because normally there are some degrees of freedom in terms of how we load the sample. So having references is going to make sure that all the positions that we establish in a recipe are going to be maintained, okay? regardless how we hold it, okay? So, um, let's click find the references. I'm going to change to my 10, okay? So it's going to ask me, is this your reference? I'm going to say, okay. I'm good. And now it's going to recalculate all the relative positions based on this referencing that I just did. So now that we are done with the referencing, we can move forward and do the acquisition. So let's first change the objective. Okay, and now we can click acquire. So it's going to directly move to the positions that we stopped. Okay, and finally we have a summary of the measurements, okay? So in total, four, it was four measurements, all of them measured, and also two minutes and 43 seconds. So this is one thing that we can do with this new version, okay? Let's do a new acquisition, but in, in this time, we're going to do a full 3D of the dental implant, something that normally we are also check in this kind of sample. So now we're going to change to the 5x, okay? And I'm going to go to the tip of the dental implant. So I'm going to load the recipe that I established earlier. Okay. And the thing is, we're going to change the type of measurements that we're going to do. Let's do a circle, okay? And a new thing in, when it comes to a full 3D is the fact that we can actually have the possibility of show the merge screen, but also not to show it, okay? In order to not show it, okay, there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, we need the merge in window to show. Then we're going to select which parameters we need to do the merge. And finally, we can save those parameters and have the merge windows not to appear to us, okay? So let's set all those parameters that we need to do. Okay, I think this is too much overlapping. I'm going to lower it down to 30. Should be okay. And I'm gonna change the recipe to use. Okay, I'm going to use the one that I know it's gonna work. So let's acquire.
Okay, so right now we have our measurement. It is already optimized in Y and Z. This is actually something new, this auto align, okay? And something new about this version is the fact that if we click to this expert mode, there are some filters that we can apply prior to the merge. We can apply a noise removal or also a smooth for phone data. So we can click merge with our filters. Okay, so this is the result. Looks pretty good, okay? So actually all the settings that we have established, it's something that we can save, okay? So we can actually click here. And by clicking here, if we go out of this, then this uh, settings of the merge windows, it's actually saved as well in this recipe, okay? So now we can uncheck that and we will get the merge without any interaction from us. As well, we can get not only the merge, but also the enroll. So first of all, it's going to do the merge using the settings. And finally, it's going to proceed and do the enroll. There's going to be a plux file that we can open with sensor view and check some dimensions, okay? And that's, that's pretty much about this new capability. The following one is going to be that we can merge different sets of data that don't share the same system of coordinates. So now I can register the two samples by using some points. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to load two different full 3D. Okay. So let's open first this one, which is the tip, the very tip. And then let's open another one that it's gonna be close to the tip, but not exactly the tip, okay? In order to do the registration, we're going to actually go here. And there's another full different interface in which we can select are the different points that these two measurements share so it can do a merge, okay? So for example, this and this are going to be the same and then this one and for example we can check another part this one, this one. okay so let's click a line and now the software is going to find those similarities and finally merge the two samples. Okay, and the result is that we have merged the two files. Okay, this is new from this, this version. All right, so thank you so much for seeing this video. We will continue following videos with new versions. Thank you so much.